Hello, my name is Mike Aben and welcome to my KSP campaign. Right at the conclusion of the last episode, you saw me eyeing a contract to get a Kerbal above an altitude of 18 kilometers. Normally not really that much of a challenge, but given my, well, what we call the unkerbled start here uh, with very small parts, uh, yeah, a little bit more of a challenge. My biggest booster is this striker. SRB, which is a 0.625 meter part, but I figure if I maybe, I don't know, I'm hoping just to attach maybe like four of them. I want to get a Delta V in and around 1.5 kilometers per second, I think, to ensure that I get to the altitude that I want. Well, four of them don't give me quite the Delta V that I like, but oh, come on, Jeb, you know you want to fly this thing, so we're going to go for it. The whole radio boosters really isn't working for me. I'd really like to put them on the bottom as a stack. And thankfully, what uncurbled start taketh away, uncurbled start also giveth, because what I do have unlocked right now is the magic cubic strut. Yes, that magic part that can connect anything to anything. And I just want to get four of these down here stuck on the bottom. Now remember, I don't have parachutes, so this thing is going to have to glide back down to the surface if I want to return my pilot in one piece. In fact, I'm not going to put any landing yet. We're going for the water on this one, obviously. And my old standby of late has been a wing type D with... Uh, it's the smallest of the wing parts, but with the tiny things I've been building, it feels kind of large. I realized after a bit that I was going to have to stage these boosters if this was going to work and just glide the capsule back down, but I do not have stack decouplers either. So this was going to require the abuse of some radial ones. Of course I need to ensure that the detached capsule can still glide. And I was finding that the center of lift indicator was kind of flaky with the orientation that I had of the capsule. Could have taken this probably to the space plane hangar, but I kind of got stuck just sticking in the VAB. Eventually, I did get it to work. And it was a bit of a fight to get the SRBs to want to stick on their ends against the radial decouplers. But again, it's the cubic strut that comes to my eventual rescue. Oh, look at this thing. Oh yes, Jeb, you definitely want to fly this thing, don't you? You're just dying to get at it. So, we named this thing the X-1. I think I have enough now to uh, give this thing a simulation, so we'll go for it. Oh, Valentina, you're in there. Okay, that's cool. Uh, SAS, we can put that on and go. Just want to go straight up. I want to get an altitude of 18 kilometers. So far, I'll go a little bit eastward. Not bad. Not bad. Come on. My altitude's not climbing as quickly as I would like, though. I might need more boosters, but I think that'd be kind of stupid. Oh, 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 I want this to work. Please work, please work, please work. Watching my Apple Waps is here. Oh, we are just shy. Uh, crap. Crap. Well, let's, let's just try. This is going to be a proof of concept to see if... We're not far off. Okay, we are losing speed, so we're going to lose these. Actually, what we're going to do... Let's keep it on there. And now we're going to lose Okay. Well, Val, can you fly it? That is the key. Maybe we can get a bit more altitude out of this thing. Maybe just redoing the staging. Um, 
Well, let's just make sure she can fly this thing. That really is the test, is whether this stupid thing flies. We can fly this. We got this. Valentina, you have this. Easy. Easy McPeasy pants. Okay, maybe a little bit change in staging. Stalling. It's nice and gentle even. Oh my gosh, okay. So end the simulation. And into the VAB I did go and started tweaking this thing. And I'm not going to show you those tweaks because you will be seeing this rocket just a little bit later in this very episode. Needless to say, I was happy with it, I suppose. I can say that. That's why you are going to be seeing it later. It's going to take about eight days for it to build once I put it into the building queue. And I was happy enough with it that I immediately then went into mission control and quickly picked up that get a Kerbal to 18 kilometer altitude contract. And then it was time to start looking through, well, I got a rather ample supply of part testing contracts from which to choose from. And you know what? You'll be seeing that contract later as well. So I don't need to speak any more about it. What I do want to get to though, well, I do have a new and improved mallet sounding rocket coming out of the VAB. You know, I'm kind of amazed every single time. I, I'm not going to do any night launches, but every single time I've... These things have been finished always during the day. It's kind of... I don't know. I, 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 I don't know really what to make of that, but it's kind of interesting how that's always worked out. Alright. So we're going to take this mallet. We're going to send it over the water. Uh, try and see if we can keep it in the air long enough to get a decent telemetry report. The nice thing about the mallets is they're just, they're just so cheap to build. It'd be nice to get some parachutes on them and then I can recover them and then it'd be even cheaper. We have most of the telemetry flying low over the water still to collect. I've got very little of that. So hopefully we can keep this thing up long enough. Now, I'm wondering if I should reposition these fins so that they're closer to the center of mass and I could actually make an attempt at gliding this thing as opposed to what is never this thing is really more like a dart <laughs> make it more like a more, more, uh, more like a glider less like a dart I think would be a good thing but anyway here we go we're collecting our data I'll try and stay in the air as long as I can. I am, by the way, 95% convinced that the rate at which this transmission transmits is a function of two things. One is the transmission rate of the antenna, which you can see in the VAB. And the other is the signal strength, which is 100% of course right now because we are so darn close. And I think as long as your signal strength is 100%, you are transmitting as quick as you can. So I'm going to stop with the whole farting around with antennas. I'm pretty convinced that's the way it works. As long as your signal strength is 100% and you have your fastest antenna as far as transmission rates available, I don't have a lot of antennas available right now. I think that's all you can do as far as improving the rate. And unless somebody can point me somewhere that says something other than that, that's the way I'm going to work from now on. You know what I should do? Oh my gosh, why am I doing this? Why don't I actually build like a little drone plane? That would make way more sense than this. Oh, that's what I should be doing next. Uh, you should be able to fly. Is it... Oh, 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 that's not... Ah, no! <laughs> okay, shut down, shut down, shut down. Why, 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 why? Terminate. Okay, I need to get the center of mass and the center of thrust exactly lined up. That was just stupid. If you're going to fly it like a rocket... Build it like a rocket, god damn it. Okay, that's... Oh yeah, SAS doesn't work. <laughs> Alright, uh, try again. Skaboom. 
it takes a while for those jet engines to really, and it just wants to no. I don't think the vertical takeoff idea is a good one. I think I'm overcomplicating this. Up, up, up. Oh, I am definitely overcomplicating everything. Loop de loop again. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> Woo, look at that now. All right, all right. I, 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 I am abandoning this idea. It's just way with something as small as this. Way, 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 way too silly. Okay, let's go back to here. Let's bring up the good old, good old reliable mallet. But instead of this orientation, what if I simply took the mallet What you're, what you're really interested in, what's it going to be like once the fuel's all gone. Take all that out. I like you. Just do that. That's all I'm going to do. Okay, the X1. Oh no, the mallet's going to still be built before the X1 is. It's happening on this front. Okay. It's night! I jinxed it with my whole going on about how it's always day when I get to the end of this. Finally, it's night. Okay, we're going to warp to sunrise. Because uh, there's no reason for you to see something at night. Oh! Why are we on the... How? What? Did I... I don't understand. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, <laughs> that is just weird. Oh, okay, we'll do it from here. This time I'm going to go for the grasslands. Uh, I think there's just more science to get, and what would be groovy is if we could actually get all the grasslands. This thing has no chance of ever making it past the grasslands, I think. It just doesn't have the range. Keep it around a pitch of 45, because I think that will get me the maximum range. And there we go. We are collecting data over the grasslands, and we are out of juice. We're just going to go ballistic for a little bit. Minimize our angle of attack, our aerodynamic profile, and then we'll see if we can actually go into a little bit of a glide mode. This ain't a bad glider. Oh man, I could stay up here forever. So I don't think this is going to be an issue at all. Getting my uh, all of that telemetry. But of course, the easiest situ easier situation is simply putting a bloody parachute on it now. And then if I put the mallet in here, or sorry, the striker, the one that's twice as big as this, I bet you I can get mountains and grasslands and all that kind of stuff. And again, a parachute, that would make much more sense. Build a striker one, parachutes, down it comes. Striker 1 might, well, I don't know if it can get high altitude. Well, definitely the Striker with the three boosters on it can definitely get high altitude. So much work for under two points of science. But I want everything I can get. I'm at 18! 18 science for me. So that means another node. Oh, but I'll be careful. Oh, I'm so close. Less than half a kilometer above the ground. Don't mess up now. I'm getting cocky. I'm getting cocky. 
Come on, extend that glide, extend that glide. You are so close to getting rid of all this data. Don't you dare touch the ground. Don't you dare even think about it, you son of a... Can we get some up? Up! Up and down. Speed. And up. Uh, no, no, we're stalling. No! No, no, no. We're almost got all the data. No, no, no. You son of a... Ah! Hey, that worked out pretty good. Wait, 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 wait. We survived. Oh. <laughs> we survived that landing. The state Putnik survived. This has not happened before. And it is still working. It's still collecting data. Uh can and we can recover it we lost the antenna i think we have lost our ability to to um transmit but it doesn't matter we can recover it oh that's awesome so we are done there there's nothing else left to do we got some bonus data all right we got 18.3 now but we should be able to get some just from recovering it so let's recover the vessel so we got some telemetry data while sitting on the grasslands. And yeah, we got 0.7 more science, 0.8 altogether. Woohoo! I am more becoming now, I never really used to get this way in this game, but I, I uh, is, is being now this sort of science <laughs> complete completionist. I never used to worry about these things, but now I want to get all these bars up full. That is so, so excited. So that means I got, yeah, look at that. Oh, I, I don't know. That's, that's stupidly satisfying. That shouldn't be that satisfying. <laughs> all right, we get to unlock another node. And finally, way down here, oh, so, the goo container. Like, clearly, goo container would be a good idea. And even bigger, the really big solar panels. I'm a little surprised at how early the solar panels come. Those are big. What to do, what to do? I think this is probably... The stack decouplers, and then I can, yeah. I mean, come on, let's, let's do that. I think we are just a day away, one game day away from the main event. Let's do this. It's time for the X1. Oh, the Juno's coming first. Okay, it's time for the Juno. <laughs> the Juno, which you have seen so many times before. So we won't spend a ton of time with it. So we're doing a pressure scan. We're doing um, a temperature scan. Why are we doing a temperature scan? There cannot be any science associated with that stuff. Delete that. And we are off. And we should be starting to collect data. Temperature's waiting. Okay. So we are collecting data over the shores. Just a pressure scan. No Geiger counter. I guess the Geiger counter can't be done flying low. That's perfectly fine, of course. And let's see, how long? 15 minutes, so okay, we're going to be doing a little bit of flying about. <laughs> yeah, it's 15 minutes, but a pressure scan gets you 5.7 science, and they are biome specific. So, well, you know the way this is going to work now. I'm going to be taking this plane and getting over as many biomes as I can, uh, spending that time to collect the pressure scan science. But this seems to be the way Kerbalism is sort of set up, is that, you know, the more the science reward, the more time it's going to do, take you to collect said science, and quite frankly, that's that's fair enough. If you're going to get a fairly good science reward, well, it's going to take you some time to collect that science. 
By the way, I did discover you are taking... I, it turned out I was doing the Geiger counter. It was doing the radiation scan from the Geiger counter. It just wasn't showing up as being transmitting from the hard drive. And this is sort of the same thing that happened with the crew report when I first flew this plane a couple of episodes ago. The crew report also wasn't showing up as being transmitting. And I was a little bit confused by that. And it was a viewer replying on that video who pointed out to me what was going on that the thing is is that those uh, science experiments the crew report the Geiger counter and probably future ones as well they generate science more slowly than the antenna is capable of transmitting that science so it's just being transmitted and never really collecting in the hard drive uh, so that makes you know you can't just count on that hard drive window to explain everything that's going on. Pay attention to what's going on with your instruments as well. So by the time I'd actually collected that pressure scan over the shores, well Valentin had already flown all the way around the southern tip of this continent, was now coming up the western coast of it, and when it was done I happened to be, well, right by the desert, so I figured, well, I'm here, I might as well make that the next biome that I collect. So uh, I started just going back and forth over that little patch of desert that's on the western coast. You know, the more I learn about Kerbalism, get used to the way this works, the more I like it. This is just more satisfying than, you know, having to take the time and flying around and not getting those insto science, and also not having to deal with, uh, you know, that you have to keep coming back the way the stock game works you get a big chunk of science and then you got to come back and get a little bit chunk you know a chunk that's smaller than that and then a little chunk more depending upon how that experiment works and then you finally get to the point where you say well I don't have it all but I can't deal with going back here anymore to get point one science but with this like if you plan it out you take the time you can collect all that science in that biome you don't have to come back and to me that feels just a lot more satisfying. But it was during that time over the deserts that I began to realize uh, I'm not going to hit all the nearby biomes. My fuel was already well less than half used up, so I made the prudent decision that, you know, after the deserts, we just started heading straight home. So, straight across the continent, let's get ourselves back home. No need to put this to a risk. You know, at the end of all this, we'll just recover the plane uh, into storage, so it will be ready to fly in almost no time whatsoever, and then we'll just get back out, we'll finish off the rest of these biomes. I also started thinking that, you know what, with this plane, uh, with the adventures I was having with my little drone, why don't I just stick a Stay Putnik on the end of this thing? Just bring, put the Stay Putnik probe on there, you can have Val or Jeb fly it around, have the Stay Putnik doing all the telemetry stuff it needs to do. I don't need to build another plane. This plane is going to work just fine for me. Speaking about this plane, you know, I'm starting to get really attached to it. <laughs> I, find, I find I always get that way. I build these vessels that I like to reuse, and this is my first reusable vessel of this campaign. There will definitely be others, but as soon as I've used it a few times, I really start to get attached to it. I, I, I'm very reluctant to to upgrade it. I got new technology, but I don't care about the new technology. I really love my little plane. I don't want to get rid of my plane. Look at it. It's just just so cute, right? So I'll probably continue to hang on to this plane until it becomes absolutely useless to me, you know, uh, that I have to go out and collect some science in the high atmosphere with a plane, or I have to go and go to the tundra or the caps or something, which this thing can't do. But until then, yeah, I think I'm going to stick around uh, with it after a little bit. But it was during this mission that the X-1 was completed, actually it was pretty early in this mission that the X-1 was completed and rolled out, and after recovery, despite now having 24.8 science to spend, no, I was too excited, no, we're gonna, this mission is, this episode is going to be about the rocket plane, the X-1, let's get right to it. Okay, we are here. All right, let's open up the contract window. Again, we have a couple of contracts here. Uh, one's to get to 18 kilometers with Jebediah. Put that there. 
and the other is to test the parachute. So I do have a parachute attached to this. I think I have to test this through staging, if I am not mistaken. Yep, we have to test that through staging. So, uh, but I'm still planning on landing this thing by gliding it. I, I, uh, so, because we're going to have to test, we'll have to get to, we're going to have to manipulate things to get it at this altitude. We're going to test it on the way down, not on the way up. Uh, we probably can do some crew reports. We'll see how that goes. Crew report, crew report. We'll queue that up. That should be ready to go. Uh, SAS on. Absolutely SAS on, but otherwise I'm a little nervous. <laughs> okay, we can do this. We can do this. We can do this. Just, 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 just do it. We are off. Okay. So I've changed this a little bit from when you last saw it. Only the two of the boosters are being run right now. And we just want to go straight up. We'll keep an eye on Apoapsis here. But the rechanging the configuration of the boosters, not having them all go at the same time is what did this. Okay, ready and stay. There they go. Now we're just on these two. Jeb is having the time of his life. A crew report. We should. Crew report, crew report, crew report. Okay, we should get a crew report once we're in high high altitude, I would think. Okay, Apple Waps, this is definitely getting up there. 18, 9, 20 kilometers, 21 kilometers. We got this, we got this. Okay, and we're going to hang on to the boosters. Because right now their weight is contributing to our... Uh, Ooh, I hope that's not too close. Um, contributing to how far we can get this going. The cockpit's pretty light once we get rid of it. We are now over 20 kilometers. Anyway, we have passed the 18 kilometers. We still have to land or splash down on Kerbin to succeed with this contract, which is fair enough. Okay, we are starting to close in. Yep, and once we're going back down, there we go. Okay, we'll lose these, and we are on our way downwards. Uh, please do not crash into your own boosters. Let's see if we can just get out of their way. <laughs> okay, there we go. We should be okay. They're off. All right, Jebediah, let's see if we can. Now, I don't want, I want my speed between 110 and 210, so oh, let's see if we can just kind of and oh now we are going too fast slow down jab okay we're slowing down now okay let's get more speed oh that's too much okay i can control speed here to some degree oh oh, oh stage okay that's good that's good that's good we did it okay um should we leave it on there let's let's see i don't know I can cut this if this parachute turns out to be... Jeb's like, cut the parachute! Cut the parachute! Because <laughs> I'm, I'm very confident I can glide this thing in. But you know what? This is... How's our crew... Did we ever get any kind of crew report? I don't know. When we were in high altitude, I wasn't paying enough attention. Okay, all that's left now is to bring Jeb down safely. That shouldn't be an issue. I really should have pointed eastward a bit during that ascent. What I mean, I wouldn't have come so close to my own boosters. Hmm. I'm a little confused with the crew report. Oh, here we go. Well, we did get crew report. We got some flying high. I just didn't see them. I should have had this open the whole time. So we got some flying low. I don't think there's any data associated with that. There is... Flying high crew reports. Oh, but that's over the shores. Half a credit there. We're transmitting. To be honest, let's not transmit any of this. We'll just, we'll just uh, want to save my electricity for my reaction wheels. Oh wait, I'm not transmitting. I don't even have an antenna.
it's just being stored. I'll just leave it anyway. To be honest, this parachute is not as much of a pain as I was worried it was going to be. I never tested this with the parachute. I thought I thought the parachute. I can still kind of fly a bit. It's just a drag chute right now. When is this gonna? Oh, gotta get down to a thousand before this deploys. Does look good though. Wonder if that's restock making the parachute look a little different. Oh, those are boosters hitting the ground. Hopefully nobody was hurt. <laughs> okay. Oh, Jeb, should we cut? The, I, I really kind of want to cut the chute. What do you think, Jeb? Should I cut the chute? I feel like I want to cut the chute. We're just being wimps because we're saying we'll fly. <laughs> No, you know why not? Because we're collecting data. We should be collecting as much data as we can. That's why we're not cutting the chute, Jeb. To maximize our science collection. We are wimping out for science. <laughs> it's not your fault, Jebediah. Don't worry. Oh, now we got full deployment of the chute. Oh, dear. Just, just turn the SAS off. Jeb's like, no, I want to fly. It is going to come down pretty hard. I think that's, that's, oh no, but it'll slow down. Okay, let's time warp. Goodness sakes. Remember, Jeb, it's for science. big part of me really wants to fly this thing. I mean, it flew fine in simulation. Certainly can't cut the parachute now, though. Because we'd just fall. <laughs> I wouldn't if we're going too slow. It would just fall and crash. We're still not going to collect all the crew report we can. Wait a minute. There can't be any flying low over the water crew report. We did that with the... Oh my god! Of course we did. I'm sorry, Jebediah, there's no science associated with this because we kind of did that. We did a lot of flying low over the water. That has no value. I'm sorry, Jeb, you could have done your flying thing. My fault. My fault, Jebediah, I'm sorry. We are collecting this, though. This has got value, right? Splashdown crew report has to have value. Yeah, 1.1 according to this. So we'll collect all that and then we will recover. But that's our contract complete. Oh, we are done. Yep, let's recover. And how much science are we up to now with those contracts done? There we go, 1.5 science from that. We're now at 31 science. Oh, we got ourselves some milestones. We splashed down in the ocean. That's not that exciting. And for our contracts. Okay, but you know what? Uh, gonna have to spend some of this science. I think we'll do that next episode. We also have to, we've kind of banged through our vessels here. <laughs> gotta build something new. Not quite sure what that'll be. Have to pick up some contracts first, but you know, bigger, further, faster. <laughs> I think we can count on that. But in the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.